Well, hello, hello, hello out there. How's everybody doing? Welcome to the Christopher Wright Show. And as everybody knows on my channel, I don't push ads and I don't sell products. So if you enjoy the content, please click on one of the links in the description section below or in the comment section and show support. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hello, 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 hello out there. Is everybody doing? Is everybody's favorite conservative in New York, Christopher Wright, here to present with another one of my sit back and chats. And I got a very, very special guest with me today. Uh, a, I mean, a real patriot, a uh, public figure, a political commentator. commentator. This, uh, he's been an amazing guy. He's been around for quite a bit of time out there on, on YouTube and other channels, getting his voice heard. And I'm just glad to have him, to have the opportunity for him to take time of his day to sit down with me and talk. And I'm going to go ahead and let him introduce himself. You guys might know him as Anthony Brian Logan, a.k.a. ABL. Well, let him give a little background of who he is. Well, yeah, man, glad to be here. Um, glad to talk about a few things that's going on all over the place because it's crazy times right now. But I've been around for a minute just doing my thing in a conservative movement. I started doing videos back in like 2015 on YouTube. But before that, I had a blog and I was always talking about news related things. Uh, at one point, I was liberal. I became conservative like right around 2011, 2012. You know, I had my red pill moment back then. And ever since I've been pretty much on the ground running, just doing different things. And here I am today. All right, all right, man. Yeah, you really have uh, been doing big things, man. I kind of saw you when you just first came out, started doing your thing. And, you know, you were just at the beginning stages. And I see, you know, you, you had a, you know, quick, you grew very quickly. And, you know, you got a strong following, a strong base of people, like strong supporters with you, man. And it's just amazing watching you grow, man. And, you know, you, gave encouragement to a lot of people like myself included to kind of get out there and get my voice heard as well. You know what I mean? Like you're one of the originators out there. So much respect for you, man. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, brother. No problem. All right. So let me go ahead. I got the first question I want to go ahead and ask you, <clears throat> kind of get your point of view on this whole matter, which is what are some of the things voters need to do at, on, in a state and a local level? Um, you know, there's two, you know, two things I want to answer you on that part of the question. One is, you know, continue the populist MAGA movement and voice our displeasure with the rhinos. And also, how do we address the Dominion voting machine issues? Well, with the Dominion voting machine issue, any kind of voting irregularity, you got to get that hardcore physical evidence. I'm talking about smoking gun, like something that's so irrefutable. When you present it to the world, nobody can deny it. You got to have that. And there's different ways to get it. I'm not really sure how you're going to go about getting it. But you guys out there, you're very creative, very intuitive. You know how to get certain things done, how to get certain information out there. Because, I mean, I was seeing the whole Hunter Biden laptop. It, I mean, it, it came out of left field. Like he had pictures, video, all of that. Like that right there, nobody can deny. All right, they might try to say, oh, it came from Europe. It doesn't matter where it came from. That's him with the crack pipe. It's irrefutable evidence. You got it right there. So we need to have that same thing for any kind of voting irregularity. I mean, we all know that there's something fishy going on, but it's a matter of being able to get that rock solid smoking gun that says, hey, here's what it is. So anything like that, I would say get that and then nobody can really beat it. Now, as far as local, I mean, you got to get involved with your community. See, it's, it's one thing to talk about things that are going on, but you got to be on the ground physically at these places. Like where I live in Tennessee, I'm out here. People know who I am, like in local politics. They know me, they know my wife, we're around places and you gotta be there on the ground and people's faces talking to them. You know, that's that's where you get it. And then if you're involved locally, you can see what's going on with the voting firsthand. See, it's one thing to come about after the fact and try to observe what's happening as far as a recount or whatever. But if with the ballots in your hand on election day, it's a little bit different. You're able to see from you know having a first-hand view of what's going on so you don't need anybody to come about later and then try to tell you what's going on or try to convey a message to you you already know what's going on because you are right there seeing it firsthand so that's the way you go about it get on the ground with your boots physically in the world in your community locally and also get that hardcore physical evidence no i, I, I totally respect you on that answer because I always tell people all the time, grassroots is where it's at. You know what I mean? Like I say, conservatism is a new counterculture. It's a quote I took from PJW. And it's I really stick to that because I feel like this is a new movement that's coming up, like a young, vigorous, conservative wave coming that's been, you know, that's been going. And I think, you know, if we really get out there and hit the streets and kind of like get our voices heard and let people know what we stand for, it can really get the message across in a, in a really good way. That's why I found a group here in New York, the CRA, the Conservative Republican Alliance, 
because there's so many conservators here that I didn't even know about until I started doing videos. They started commenting like, hey, I'm in New York too. You know, what can I be? How can I help out? How can I participate? So I just start that group to kind of get them a way to get them involved. And, you know, we try to do monthly events and get out there and get in the community and just get out there, man. So there's a lot of ways to matter where you're at locally. You can really get out there and get your voice heard and, you know, get that mega movement message out there, the conservative message out there. That's right. Absolutely. That's the best way to go. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Now, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, what are your thoughts on cancel culture, the censorship of conservatives on social media and the war between mainstream versus alternative news? Oh, that's that's a really deep question because it goes in a lot of different ways. And the thing about cancel culture, like the way it's presented is a way that some people might appreciate. How can I explain? Some on the left, just a regular everyday casual person that kind of looks at politics, but is not really involved with it. They may think Trump is racist because the media say so. They may think that any kind of conservative movement is racist because the media says so. So then when somebody gets quote unquote canceled, they pretty much on board because they believe whatever they're told. They're not really gonna look too deep into it. But the people that are involved in the cancel culture, meaning those at the top, those that really kind of pull the strings, they know what they're doing. This is part of a greater effort to try and silence conservative people. It's kind of a smear campaign on a large scale. Oh, they, you know, these guys over there, they're part of this violent group. They're hateful, they're racist, they're intolerant. So. They should be canceled. They shouldn't be on the airplane. They shouldn't be allowed to have a driver's license or anything. They should be canceled from certain PayPal website. They should be canceled because they're bad people. But in reality, it's not even about them being bad or any kind of morality. They're not morality police. They're trying to get them off of these things because they're afraid of the competition. They're afraid of the information getting out there. If I'm able to empower a lot of people with information, that may kind of change their mind away from what they think already, then I'm a dangerous person. It's not even about my, my morals. They don't care about morals. I mean, you got guys that are out there just allowed to flourish on television that are beings. Reza Islam from CNN, look it up. This man's a cannibal on television. That's fine to the moral police, allegedly, but if you're conservative, you're waving the flag, talking about 1776 and being proud of your country, all of a sudden you're persona non grata and you gotta be canceled. You see, it's, it's a way to just blind the average everyday person and to believe in somebody is terrible to cancel them and using it as an excuse. Because if you just say, oh, they're a political enemy, they may not be so accepting of that excuse as the moral argument is. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy how they try to use the term hate speech for anything that's like, that shows patriotism or if you nationalism for your country. It's like they try to, you know, label it as hate speech or even you see even in religion when it comes to Christian values and everything like that, they try to use similar techniques and everything like that. And they, they're so quick to talk, call us fascists and say, oh, we're being fascist. You guys are all, you know, Nazis or whatever term they want to try to label this as. But used, if you look at what they're doing in their techniques, they're the ones who are actually speak loud in the words. They're the ones whose actions represent what they're claiming we are. So I see a lot of times with the left, a lot of times when they point fingers at us and say, we're this, that, and the third. And a lot of times is what they're really doing behind closed doors is what it seems like to me. All, all times, it's just deflection. You know, it's the way, you know, okay, look at them and see what they're doing. Meanwhile, they're doing the exact same thing. They accuse us of doing it. We're not, we're not even doing it. It's just, it's a deflection to try and, you know, it's a, it's a diversion tactic so they could do whatever they want to do while trying to silence us at the same time. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And, and that's why I've been trying to let people know, like, especially like friends and family of mine, because, you know, I, you know, you know, within the black community, there's a lot of people who vote Democrat. And so, you know, it's been like a process from like the day one with me first saying, hey, I'm supporting Dr. Ben Carson before Trump and dealing with those issues and then Trump. And it's been like a step by step process with them. But I've just been showing them like, you know, look at, you know, these accusations when Trump just ran, they were calling them all these different terms and names and supporters, all these crazy stuff. And when I showed evidence of their side doing those things that they were claiming for us, that's how I kind of let them kind of get the bigger picture. Like, don't you see that the mainstream media is lying to you in a way and they're trying to manipulate, manipulate you in a way? So it's waking a lot of people up. It's slowly but surely. But I'm noticing like from 2016 to now in 2021, a lot more people seem like they see the bigger picture. Absolutely. 100%. Yes, definitely. Now, uh, my next question I had for you, ABL, is what would you say to all the young conservatives who are coming up and want to get involved in a political scene? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think one of the main things would be um, getting with other people that are conservative, you know, having little groups, little organizations, even if it's just friends hanging out, you know, hang around other people that kind of have similar 
viewpoints as you. Now, I'm not saying you all have to be the exact same person, but you can have things in common. That's nothing wrong with that, but you could be different. You know, one person could be more loud, more boisterous or more out there. Somebody could be more quiet and, you know, you can have different personalities, but have things in common. You know, if you guys are kind of going towards the same direction in life, you got a lot of the same values, you know, like have community together. That's probably the main thing. And then also just uh, do some studying, do some history, uh, uh, you know, study your history and see what's come before you, who's come before you and look at what's going on and the, the things that you do and how you operate, see if it's been done before, because there are some things that has happened before and you can look at it, you can say, okay, if they did that and they were behaving that way, that might not be the best thing because it ends up like this or it ends up like that. So study those that have come before you to understand where you're at right now. Understand true history because what, what they teach you in school, K through 12 in college, a lot of time it's missing context. It's not all the way true. They're not giving you the full piece of information you need. Like even now in my adulthood, I'm still learning things every single day. That's one thing you gotta know about, you know, just life. Always keep learning. You know, if, if you're a young man, you still are kind of in your infancy. I'm in my infancy still in politics. So if you're a young person, you're just beginning. So don't think you have it all figured out. Always learn. So always read, research, understand where you are, study history, and be around those that have similar interests and viewpoints in life as you, and you guys can bounce ideas off each other and you can help each other go forward that way. So that's probably the best way to go about it. Also, just on a personal note, um, don't have any kids before you get married. Get married, that's very important as well because True, once, once you have that union together, that'll help you go so much further, not just in your personal life, but also in your political life and your moral stance. That'll help you out tremendously as well. So have all your personal things together, do the right thing and study your history. Wow, amen to that, brother. That, that was some strong advice. I hope the young people out there heard what my man ABL just said right there. That's some knowledge he's kicked me off. <laughs> and that's that's a lot of real talk because, like I said, when I when I was younger, you know, I was on the left. You know, I was so naive to so much. I mean, I was wearing Che Guevara shirts. I said this in my last episode, something Mike Nevis in my last episode. I mentioned that, and like I didn't even like study the man and know like you know when I got older he was racist and he wasn't even you know. There's a lot of things I learned later on in life. And then about the Democratic Party, you know, I thought I was you know younger. I was out you know assume you know so many blacks voted Democrat. That I was in the party that helped out, you know, free the slaves and everything else like that. And it took Larry Elders and the Thomas Souls and Dinesh D'Souza's later on in life to really show me a real history lesson because I'm a history buff. And it was kind of like, I was getting away kind of embarrassed when I got older and I learned the true history of this country. The yes. real, this real stuff they leave out, you know, in the, in the school curriculum. And when I learned that, I was just like shocked. I was like, wow, like it, it like amazed me. Cause I'm like, I love history so much. And I didn't know this part of history. That's so important. You know, and so it's just, it's amazing. Like, um, that's really good advice. People learn your history, you know, history and history repeats. So when you, you know, a lot of times you want to know what's going on in life and what's going on currently, what's about to happen in the country. You can look at previous great nations before us and how they acted and things they did wrong before they fell to kind of get an idea of where we're at as a country as America as well. So that's great advice. I mean, also like ABL said, you know, make sure you get like-minded people in your life. And that took me quite a bit of time to learn myself. Um, you know, that's why I'm so proud of the conservative movement that's going on at the Young Black Leadership Summits I've been to. It's been because I meet so many like-minded people in one area. And it was amazing. And, you know, from, from all around the country, but we all had the similar basis of conservatism. So it doesn't matter where you're from, how you sound, what accent you had or whatever, you, we all have that same basis and connection. So, you know, right. I learned later on in life, but, you know, that's great advice for the young people out there. And there's a lot of young, I call them Gen Z, you know, the young people, a lot of young yeah. conservative internet generation. And what do you think about the internet generation, you know, Gen Z, uh, the young people out there? Do you think there's a future oh. with conservatism with them? Oh, definitely. You know, I have a lot of hope for these guys and girls. You know, I got my call-in show I do on my channel and I get callers as young as like, I think I had a caller that was 11 years old calling in talking about, I watch you all the time, 11, yes. Oh. You know, <laughs> my, my, like people say, you know, they'll have, they'll, they'll sit down with their parents at eight o'clock and watch me. One person said that I'm part of her homeschool curriculum. They watch my videos, part of the homeschool. Yes. So, Whoa. oh That's yeah. The, the, right there. <laughs> oh man, it, it blew me away. I was like, really me? Just a guy on the internet? Yes. I mean, you never know who's watching. You never know who's out there really paying attention. And that gives me hope for the future because these kids are really politically aware. I mean, when I was what, 11, I had no idea. You know, some of these kids sound like 35 year old men when they 14 years old, really. When I was 14, oh. you know, I'm trying to 
chase behind little girls in school and play basketball. I had no idea about politics. So these kids are really aware. They're very sharp and they're having to kind of be forced into politics, unfortunately, because their teachers are crazy. They're talking about orange man bad and black ends are greatest and black lives matter. They're being forced into it. It's a, it's a double-edged sword. On one hand, you got some kids that kind of fall to that and they're brainwashed. But on the other hand, some kids don't fall to that. They have strong parents, knowledgeable parents, and they are able to get a, a crash course in what's going on at an early age. So when they get to be 21, 22, they already have the knowledge of somebody that's like 50 years old because they learned it at an early age versus learning it early, uh, later. It's like trying to learn English as second language versus learning it as a native language. So mm -hmm. these kids are very, very sharp. I have a lot of hope for the future. I think these kids are smarter than we are right now when they get to be our age. So I have a lot of hope. Uh, I just think that what you see on television with all the, you know, the programming and stuff like that, people are going to rebel against that. They don't like the weird uh, social justice warrior stuff. They're kind of rebelling against it. And I think we're going to see a counterculture, even from their generation, rise up against what's happening right now that's trying to brainwash them. No, I agree with you on that. And there's a couple of young, you know, patriots I want to mention real quick, the CJ Pearsons of the world, the Chandler Crumps, like these guys. I mean, even Chandler's brother, Mikel Crump. Uh, I remember when I went to the first Young Black Beach to the summit and Chandler got up and spoke in front of the, you know, just, I forgot the political subject it was on, but he got up and said a few words. And he sounded like a little politician. I'm like, this kid, he was like 11 years old. This time was a 10 or 11. <laughs> and as soon as he was done talking, I said to myself, this one, I just saw a YouTube channel. I said, I got to interview him as soon as he's done. And, you know, that was his first interview we had. And to this day, wow. when he's Whatever he's gonna be doing in the future, maybe even president one day. I want to remember. I want to say to him, like, hey, remember your first interview, man. <laughs> I saw it from the jump. But yeah, these kids, man, they're they're really sharp. And that's why I tell older people that are always worried about the future so much on the conservative side. They're like, I'm so worried about what's going on with television and the programming and the manipulation. You know, I saw, you know, and I'm like, no, the future is bright. I call them the internet generation. A lot of them, they are on to the internet to get the information more than the television set. You know, and I think they're a step ahead, even some older people, because older people weren't growing up on the Internet. So TV is still like their main source for news. And right. I feel like the younger people there, they got a step ahead on that. And as long as they keep pushing forward and, you know, just keep doing what they're doing, man, I, I, I see a bright picture with Gen Z. Absolutely. All right. But uh, that brings me to my next question. And this is uh, this is really uh, something I was really curious about when it comes to you is who are your big influence in politics, past or present? Oh, that's a good question. Um, just in general politics, even if not like a political figure, like, like you were saying earlier, Thomas Sowell, um, Milton Friedman also an economist, because my thing, when I came into conservatism, it came from the, just a financial point of view, because really before that, I was kind of socially conservative anyway, kind of, you know, just growing up black household, you know, I did come from the South a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You know, my family come from West Virginia, like really, really, really conservative. Uh, they grew up in the church and all of that. So I was raised with very conservative values socially, but it was always kind of just, oh, vote for the Democrats. That's kind of how it was. So socially, I was already pretty much there as far as being conservative. And once I got to be older, I realized what's going on with the politics. And then I changed my mind. And what kind of got me into it was the money part, you know, because I'm thinking like, why are we living in an area where people are just, you know, relying upon the government, not go, not doing anything. Like, why are we stuck right here? And then it just kind of clicked in my mind about how I need to have my social values be married to my political values. And at the time they weren't, but now they are. So Milton Friedman, Thomas Sowell, Walter Williams, everybody got me into it, Larry Elder. Um, you know, th those are the main guys. It's not so much. Um, you know, I like Trump, obviously, when he came in. I thought Trump had no chance when he came in at first, when he came on the escalator. I was like, this guy, he's just kind of playing a joke. But then when he was out there, I realized what he was doing. I was like, okay, this guy understands how to really move in this in this environment, and I couldn't deny it. So guys like that, Reagan as well, similar to Trump and the way he moved around. And of course, you know, Abraham Lincoln freeing the slaves. Oh, so boy. guys like that, I look up to, but really, the economist got me into the conservative mind state because they opened my eyes to just the basic reality of the world that I was trying to deny for a long time. No, that makes a lot of sense. You know, and I had a similar upbringing as you as well. I grew up in a very conservative household, you know, both parents in the house, dad's, you know, military veteran. And I believe your dad was a veteran as well, if I believe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he was in the Marines, Air Force, and he retired, he retired as department. Wow. 
wasn't he wasn't playing around and, you know and <laughs> rest in peace to your father as well man not to you know i mean thank I you a lot of respect because i was looking at some of the photos you're posting that's what made me realize that and it kind of remind me that's why i wanted to kind of see what kind of your background because it seemed like we got similar backgrounds i said two-parent household ex uh father's a veteran grew up in a church my dad was a pastor uh, after he left the military so just socially i grew up very conservative as well so when I actually had to look at the political side of things and look at the conservative side, it wasn't like a big jump for me. It wasn't like, oh my God, I can never, you know. I was just like, okay, who they have? I saw their policies, their policies made sense, it's like you said, especially when it comes to the financial side of things. Then I said, okay, all right. And, and you know, that's why I said when Dr. Ben Carson first ran, I grew up knowing about him, reading the book, Get to the Hands when I was real young. My dad showed me at a young age with that book, like, look, you can be a black man in this country, be successful, be a strong, successful black man. You don't have to be, you know, in athletics or a musician or an actor. There's a lot of different paths you can go. Like this is the first man to, to separate Siamese twins from the from the head, uh, you know, in, in in the history of neurosurgery. So, you know, there I had a lot of different paths to kind of look at that were you know positive you know paths to grow to kind of grow up with. So when I got an age politically to make a choice, it wasn't that difficult to make the choice. But I did, of course, get a lot of backlash and a lot of it from family that was, like I said, very conservative socially members of my family, but. Um, with them, they're starting to meet to me, they're starting to see slowly but surely see more and more on a conservative political side of things because they see how strong I am for that. And they see, and I also show them how it kind of connects with them, how like they raised me, you know, how, you know, in their personal life, it all kind of connects in a way. So I, I feel, you know, in time, there's going to be a lot more people come to the conservative side of things, especially within the Black community, once they kind of see how it aligns more with their beliefs than when you see what's going on on the left with you know, transgender story time, <laughs> stuff like that, you know, so I, I just think in due time, but yeah, definitely that's uh, kind of leads me to my next question, ABL, and that's who are your favorite politicians that are currently in office? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I like uh, Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida, I like him a lot, big fan. Uh, this whole thing with the virus, he's done really, really well handling the virus. Uh, you know, he did not keep the state locked down forever. You let him just get back out there and do it. And then the numbers, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. They're talking about, oh, he's doing the wrong thing. He's trying to kill people. But he has great numbers as far as the virus and the virus deaths, better than California and probably better than New York as well. So it's like, you know, what he's doing is actually working. That's probably my favorite guy. Uh, I like, I'm like at Ted Cruz a lot lately. I mm -hmm. think he's doing a good job. Um, it's not a whole lot more guys. It's, it's other people right now, but I can't really think. Oh, Rand Paul. Oh. Oh, Rand yeah. Paul is doing a great <laughs> job. Yes, oh man, fantastic! I know I've been a, I've been a fan of Rand and Ron, of course, Doctor Ron Paul, Doctor Rand Paul, too. The both doctors. I've been a fan of theirs for a long time, even beyond politics, because Rand Paul does mission trips to Haiti and does free eye surgeries. Like he's an eye surgeon, so oh, yeah, people, have, yeah, like uh, people have cataracts and things on their eye and chelations. I've had eye surgery before myself. I had a chelation on my eyes, like a really big bump on your eyelid. So I've had eye surgery before, so I know he does that for free all the time. And as a matter of fact, Trump had funded one of his trips long before he even ran for president. So that's kind of why, you know, when Trump was running and I found these things out, I'm like, OK, this is the guy right here. He's he's a real deal. So Rand Paul's been doing a great job. Um, I like what he did as far as the whole impeachment thing, saying, OK, constitutional or not, what are we going to do? So he had that vote out there. 45 senators said, no, not constitutional. So he pretty much killed that right away. He was, a, he was a very smart person. He understands how this whole thing operates. So big fan of uh, Rand Paul and Ryan, uh, Ron DeSantis, a lot like it, Ted Cruz. There's quite a few guys out there, but those are some of the top that I like right now. Yeah, yeah, those are some, those are some good choices right there. You know, I respect a lot what those Patriots are doing, especially the governor of Florida, man. He, I've been, I was down in Florida twice during this COVID situation out of New York. I've been down South four times, but in Florida twice. And it felt like I was in a different country when I went down there. It's just like, <laughs> wow, man, people were talking to each other without masks on and, you know, and hanging out outside in backyards and having barbecues. Like, I forgot about that stuff. You know, New York is like, you know, it's almost like a, it's like a ghost town here. And like everybody and their grandmothers are wearing masks and little kids are wearing masks and babies, everything. And you just see, you know, that's the biggest fear I've seen what happened with the whole COVID situation, how it's being handled compared to Florida to here in New York is, you know, I see young people and a few toddler age wearing masks. So, Later down that line, if they want to bring back these masks or something else to tell people to do, they're going to be easily more manipulated to do it because they kind That's of right. grew up in that situation. But yeah, those are definitely, and Rand Paul and his father, Ron, I mean, Ron was the first candidate on the Republican side that got my 
attention in my life. It was always Democrat before that for me. And then Ron Paul in 2000, um, it was 2012 when he ran uh, in the second term for Obama, whatever. So it was him. I was looking at Herman Cain both. And the mainstream media came and they messed up both their chances. Did the Me Too thing before Me Too with Herman Cain. Yeah, with Herman Cain, and, yeah. yeah. And I'm really, Ron really, Paul, really unfortunate. He really unfortunate. And he was into me nine, nine, and nine. <laughs> you know, that was, <laughs> he had a great campaign slogan and everything. I like, you know, he was a business sense guy before, you know, Trump came on that kind of on that avenue. So That's I like right. Herman Cain a lot. And I like Ron Paul because he just stood up for the Constitution and what was right for America. And I saw how the media messed him up by just, you know, when he won, I think it was Ohio, he won, or well, Ohio, Iowa. It was one of those big primary states and it caught people off guard. So after we won it, what they would do was just stop saying his name anytime they reported on the primaries. And I'm like, are they really just not gonna say the guy's name? Like, that's not gonna work. People are gonna pick up on that. But he fell down in the polls after that. So that's what made me for the first time say, you know what? We don't decide a president, the media decides a president. Mm. And that's what made, and then the third strike you're out was Dr. Ben Carson is when they did the whole West Point thing with him. And that was in 2016. So with that, I was like, okay, who's left? And then when I saw Trump and I saw how he was handling the media, I was like, I didn't ever have a problem with Trump, but that's not who's trying to go out there for his business. You know what I mean? Get his name out there for some money or whatever. So I'm like, all right, I like how he handles the media, but I'm like, Trump, what are your policies, man? And then when I researched him and looked back all the way back in the late 70s, early 80s, he was saying a lot of the stuff he was saying back then is what he was running on in 2016. So that's what made me say, okay, Trump is, you know, he's, and he's, you know, because he look at his past, he's been a very, you know, big when it comes to donations and helping out the community and everything like that. So there's other things about Trump that I didn't have no clue about, man. And that's what kind of made me say, okay, Trump, all right, you know, well, you don't take it seriously. And that's first time I officially voted for him was uh, Republican. I'm glad it was him and not Mitt Romney because I was, <laughs> there's no way I could have out first time doing that, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right. But my next question is for you. Do you think the president's going to be run? Uh, do you think President Trump is going to run again in 2024? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I don't really know. It, I mean, I guess it, it all depends on what he thinks will be the best thing to do, because I don't really know how he's going to feel. He's 74 right now. And then time goes on. You get older, you, 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 you might not feel the same way. So he may decide, you know what? I'm not really feeling too good. I'm kind of just want to chill and play golf. I'll just be here. I'll support those. And when I go out there and run, I'll campaign for him, but I don't want to run myself or he might run. He's already said that he's going to support those that are running in 2022 during the midterms. So he's already signaled that he wants to help. Now, the RNC has come out and said they're not going to support Trump specifically if he runs in 2024. And I think, I think they asked Ronnie McDaniel this question or whoever's, you know, leading the RNC. They asked a the question and then they were like, well, we want to stay neutral. So they're not really trying to put their support behind Trump yet. They, they kind of want to break away from Trump and do their own thing and keep going past him. But it might not be. Um, if he decides to run, I think he could win but he might not want to. And I think if he did, he has some problems within the Republican party that have caused a lot of issues. So it's, it's like a 50, 50 toss up. Maybe he won't, but if he doesn't, I wouldn't be surprised. If he does, actually, if he does, I probably would be surprised. But right now it's like 50, 50 toss up. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It is. And like you said, my biggest thing, the only reason why I'm really not leaning more towards he is going to run 2024, I mean, he's his age. He's an older man. When the time he got elected in 2016, he was the oldest president in American history to be elected. So, you know, Biden, of course, has broken that record. But uh, yeah. uh, before Biden, it was Trump. And I see, you know, in four more years, like you said, you never know in four years. And then you got to look at not just four years, but really eight years, because if you get elected, then you got four years where, you know, you want to be there to serve for those four years. So yeah. it's just something like, you know, in time will tell. Um, you know, I, I think he, you know, really kind of blossomed a, a strong movement in the conservative side of things and on the Republican Party. So I just kind of see want to see where he goes with it. If he's going to just, you know, some say maybe create a party. Is he going to do that route? Or is he going to just back candidates or is he going to back candidates and run? You know, there's different options for him to have. And to me, he has such a strong base that, you know, hate him or love him. You got to take Trump seriously because he That's does right. have you know, a big momentum shift right now his way. So I don't see any political candidates on the left or right that have a stronger base than Trump right now. So nah. he's still got to be taken seriously. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, my next question for you is, um, this is kind of uh, the little conspiracy side of things a little bit, not too deep, but I was, you know, kind of curious your your thoughts on it was, many Trump supporters are still following the QAnon videos. What are your thoughts on Q and what should you say to people who discuss it, who are discussing it? Well, I never really followed it, so I didn't, I don't know a whole lot about it. I know that, well, I'll tell you what, I watched a documentary about it, and I've seen a few documentaries about it after this whole thing with Trump and the election happened, and they kept talking about cue this, cue that. I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and get into it, because before, 
I would just hear things occasionally. I think I heard one thing about they're against child trafficking. I'm like, okay, I'm against child trafficking too. That's great. That's great to be against. I think anybody, regardless of whether you're part of a, a political affiliation or whatever, will be against child trafficking. And that's the real thing. They find kids all the time missing. So that's not a thing that anybody would be against. I didn't know anything beyond that. So I looked a little bit more into it. And it's not even really about Trump or politics. It's about some other stuff. They're talking about uh, solving riddles and puzzles. I don't know anything about that. See, that kind of stuff right there, I, I feel like if people kind of get caught up in that, they can find themselves believing things that probably aren't true. Things that are totally unrelated to politics at all, just other stuff. Now, I'm not really trying to judge anybody that's right there because I don't know why they believe it or what's true, what's false. I don't know a lot. I would just say, if anybody is believing certain things that come from that movement, just be able to verify it. My thing is, I hinge whatever I say on facts. Anytime I do a video, I source my video, and I got multiple sources from the left, right, independent, everywhere. Videotape, pictures, all of that. So if it's a thing that comes from Q, and it's true, like child trafficking, that can be easily proved, proven. But anything else, really going to pay to any mind if I can't prove it because you know anybody can say anything that doesn't mean it's true but I'm not just going to dismiss it automatically because somebody says oh Q says this I'm gonna look into it first and if it's not anything there then it's not anything there no yeah I agree true that 100 because you know I, and, and I tell people all the time to watch my videos they know people have been watching me for a bit of time I always say you know I'm, I'm a guy who I enjoy a good conspiracy theory but the key is good that means there's there's some kind of substance to it like, you know, you know, you can go all the way back to the JFK assassination and you can see there's stuff there that that doesn't fit just the media narrative of what they gave the public at the time. There's stuff that they, they left out. There's information that's missing. There's people that were witnesses that were there. That's all different things. So there's things you got to take into account when a situation like that. And you can say, OK, I can look a little deeper into it. But when you're dealing with something to me that's like this that involved with riddles and clues and all this, um, that's a whole different ball game because you're going yeah. off on a whole different path to try to answer a clue. And if you answer the clue, maybe you got the clue right, but who knows if that's even a fact, you know? So it's like, you, to me, it's like people also have to determine you're getting trapped in a rabbit hole. I think with exactly. the human, it's a deep, deep rabbit hole with that. And, you know, I looked into it a little bit myself because I'm going to just look and see what's going on. And I'm curious to see what they're talking about. But overall, um, it's not something I really want to delve too much into, delve deep into. And I see this sometimes with, the, um, I follow a guy, a friend of mine here in New York, a lad from Barely Informed. He goes to events on the left and the right when he asks tough questions on both sides. And I noticed on the right, when he asks a lot of Q non on like individuals, like, you know, give some evidence or some facts or some information, a lot of times they, they don't really have much to say to him. And you see that a lot on the left when it comes to Black Lives Matter and Antifa. When you put a mic in their face and tell them what, ask them to tell them why they're out there, they can't answer you. So I see that with the QAnon side of things. So I don't want the right to end up like, you know, with the left and get more on the radical side of things and kind of get lost in just a, you know, a different space and different area, like a utopia in a way. You know, we got to focus on the truth and facts and evidence. And that's something I always respect about you. You know, I got my whole technique when I say to people, hey, look at the description section, you know, links down there. <laughs> I got that from ABL. You know, that's if you're wondering, that's, you know, I always, because I always like to have my information to my sources because, I don't want to come out and speak on different subjects. Like this whole thing that happened with the election recently, I was coming out making these videos about, you know, things are going to, you know, people are going to get arrested or end up in jail and all that. I just stepped away from all that. I didn't want to go. I'm like, until I get the information of what's going on here, I'm not going to tell people because I don't want my audience, you know, going off on, you know, crazy goose chases and, you know, just crazy clues and stuff like that. I want to actually give them some facts and evidence. That's right. That's all you got to do. Have facts and evidence because, if someone asks me about a thing and I don't know about it, I'd be like, hey, I don't know too much about that. You know, I, I'm not, not the guy to ask. I'm not going to make up a story and tell you just because I'm going to give you an answer. And if I do a video on a thing and I have, and I say I have some evidence, I'll provide it for you. You know, so when I'm challenged about a thing, when they say, hey, ABO, you made a video about X, Y, and Z. Can you prove it? Yep, here it is. Here's a video right there. Here's the audio. Here's the pictures. All of that on my website right here. And I put it right in their face. And then I win the argument. Argument's over. I prove my case because I said it and I stand behind it, but this whole thing about kind of guessing and whatnot and clues, that's just, that's not, that's not news. That's not information that you really need to be relying on. No, I totally agree. I totally agree. So my uh, last question I got for you, ABL, and it's, uh, it's pretty much something like I want my audience especially to hear from you about is 
Have you transitioned to any new platforms? And if so, what platforms are your preferences? Okay, well, I have a BitChute account. I need to upload more on there, but I do have a BitChute account because I want that, you know, because YouTube, you never know. It could be here today, gone tomorrow. I never know. So I'm going to keep my BitChute account, keep videos on there. And also the, the main thing I have, aside from I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, aside from those main social media networks, I have my website, anthonyblogan.com. So regardless of what goes on, they can't stop it. Like I had an article about hydroxychloroquine went viral, like a million unique views. It, it was crazy. Yeah, it went viral on my billion website. Or, you said a billion? Huh? A million or a billion? A million, a million. Oh, yeah, yeah. Still, still, man, a million. Yeah, views. matter of fact, it was more than that. It was more than that. It had a million likes on Facebook because... <laughs> Yeah, like people went to the, they went to the article and liked it a million times on the actual website through the Facebook button on the, so it was more, it probably was more like 10 million unique uh, visits on that one article. It was so many visits, my um, web host called me and said, hey man, <laughs> you need a new plan because you know, your article went viral. We want you to be able to get your content out there and they cool, they're not trying to delete me. They were like, we need you to get some, you know, more plans to get your content out there. So we had to upgrade the plan and the, take down they may want to censor the video on the social media platforms and say oh it's our business it's that and the third but my website website uh a new social, social media network tomorrow i put my website over there and have my content be proprietary to me but i'll share it over there so regardless of what goes on the website that's going to be mine period all the time so that's the main Right, because I can go to a new platform, like let's say I go to Bitch Gab or even Parlor, and people had Parlor. I'm not sure if that's back or not, but it was down for a while. So if you're relying upon Parlor to get your message out there, and then that goes away, well, now what you're gonna do? So I'm gonna have my website all the time to get my message out there because it's not owned by a third party. I control it 100. percent Yeah, website is kind of like having private property on the internet, almost. You know. And I, I, that's one of the first things I did when I started. Exactly. Doing okay. Yep. You know, cause you know, cause it, cause it said I, I got Christopher Wright at uh, Christopher Wright NYC.com. And like I said, it doesn't matter what happens with my YouTube channel. Cause you know, he, I've told you when we first met, I'm like, they haven't monetized me. Still haven't monetized me to this day. So, you know, I got over 30,000 subscribers. Uh, I'm a review in that sense, but they won't pass me through. Hoping I'll probably go away eventually just by doing that. But I'm not here just for the money. I'm here to get the word out there. It's my main goal for anything. But I let people know that to check out my website, worst case scenario, if anything happens, you can find me there. You know, so we got to do this, man. We got to, unfortunately, I guess the conservatives is a new counterculture. We are like the anti-establishment that's happening right now. You know, the left and Antifa and Black Lives Matter want that title so bad. No, they are the establishment. That's why they got Black Lives Matters painted on the NBA courts and, you know, NFL players kneeling and movies and talk shows talking about them. While we're the ones who are being labeled with these crazy titles when we got to deal with all this censorship just because we are being patriotic and trying to tell people about, you know, the constitution and amendment rights and how to protect them and everything. So, uh, but ABL, uh, I just want to thank you so much, brother, for taking time out of your day. I know you got a busy schedule, man. You're a busy man. And uh, I really appreciate you coming on. Cause like I said, let's start the Christopher Wright show. And you are one of the first people, if not the first person, I really honestly want to come on and just interview because, you know, I got so much respect for you and what you do. You, you know, I've been following you for a very long time and your message, and you're one of the people that made me step out on my own and get my voice out there and heard. So even when first time we met at the first Young Black Leadership Summit, it was a pleasure meeting you and still getting to know you better. And I hope the best for you and uh, your, you know everything you do in the future, man, when it comes to getting the word out there. So uh, and if anything, I know you mentioned a little bit just now, but is anything way you want the people to go, reach out to you or find out how to connect with you, anything you want to say that it can find you? Oh yeah, well, first of all, this has been great, man. Really enjoyed my time here. Thank you for having me on. You know, it's going to be a great show. I already know it. You know, you're a great interviewer too, man. So keep, keep up the good work. Keep, keep having the content coming out. But um, the best way to find me, the website, like I was saying, anthonyblogan.com. You can go there. You can find my, my email address, my snail mail address. You can send me stuff in my PO box. You can also find all my social media platforms and all the articles on my website. Either I write it or my wife writes it. So it's all original content, all original videos on the website right now today. They can't censor that. They can't stop that. So... That's always the best place to find me on the website, anthonyblogan.com. All right, perfect. All the pictures out there, please hope you hear that, heard what he just said, get the information out there because check this man out. 
He's you um, if you enjoy my content, you guys been following me for over two years now. The people have been there from day one, say they love what I'm doing. If you enjoy my content, you're really going to enjoy what ABO has to say, man. This guy, he's knowledgeable. He gets his facts, his information in order. Real deal patriot. And I'm glad he was able to take the time his data at his interview. I hope you guys enjoy the content. And like always, God bless everybody out there listening. And God bless the United States of America. Peace out.